okay, so I have people from all levels. That's really cool. B1, A1, A2, B2, even cool. Uh, B1, um, nice, cool. Um, so my name is Werner Skaller. I'm a co-founder at Scapago Online Language School. My first language is German. I've been teaching German for, for many, many years. And uh, German is an interesting language in a way. It's the second most taught language in Europe. And uh, when you travel to non-German speaking countries, you often hear people, oh, I've learned uh, German in high school, like three years, five years, seven years, but I cannot speak it at all. I don't understand, I'm like nothing. And I think this is a little bit peculiar. I mean, imagine you're on a diet and you tell me, um, well, I've been dieting for three years, but I haven't lost any weight. So that would be very weird, right? Why, why would you do that? And you would expect that there is something either wrong with your goal or there is something wrong with the diet. And um, that's basically uh, what brought me to this talk uh, because I was thinking maybe school is set up in a way to make us fail learning German. Um, so we can learn something from that if it is our goal to, to fail at learning German and we can also learn something if we actually want to learn German because then we can basically do the opposite of the strategies that um, people are pursuing. So in this webinar I'm sharing my 10 favorite strategies for um, how to fail at learning German. Maybe you're using some of them and if you're really up to learning the language then well maybe you might want to give up on some of them. So the first one, of course, to be honest, all these high school students and university students, we need to take into account that maybe they don't want to learn German. So then, well, that doesn't, doesn't really help, does it? I guess I don't need to say so much about it, but if you're not motivated to learn German, then I think it will be really difficult. And of course, um, this is nothing that you can somehow fake. So it's important to somehow build an emotional uh, connection to, to, your to your language learning process. Um, but you have to be radically honest to, to yourself there. I once taught a student who would want me to change the method of teaching every now and then, every two, three weeks and, and so on. And after a while, I asked her very honestly, do you actually want to learn that language? And after that, she canceled the course. So <laughs> I think sometimes, I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't want to lose you if, you, um, if you're up to uh, enrolling at a course at my school or buying a book or an online course. Um, but maybe you should ask yourself, do you actually really want to learn German? Or is it just because your boss says, oh, well, you have to because uh, our representation in Hamburg and our customers there, they're happy if you can speak a little bit of German to them. But in this case, I suggest that you, um, well, review your rotation a little bit. Um, but of course, I hope all of you who are, who are here that you are actually somehow motivated, that you really want to learn the language. So the second best um, strategy to fail at learning it um, is ignoring the pronunciation. And I'm always mesmerized at traditional language schools how easily and how quickly they abandon pronunciation. I think there is, of course, a reason to it. They, um, grammar is easy to test. Um, either it's wrong or it's right. Um, pronunciation is not. And it might also be a little bit awkward. You have 15 students in a room and then you're working with one uh, on, a, on a weird sound and everybody else is watching. And people find that a little bit peculiar. So I understand that. But the result is that there is a heavy accent usually and that's a bit sad. Uh, you don't want that. So um, you have to somehow do it yourself. I'll talk a little bit later on how you can do it. Um, it's, um, and, and you have to be patient with it. You cannot study the grammar for years, but then give up on the pronunciation right away. And I see that many times. I see a teacher showing a student how to, how to pronounce a word. Um, the student fails, they give up. It's like when you want to, when you're learning how to play tennis, uh, you don't throw the ball and then try to hit it uh, with a, what is it called in English, racket or, um, and the ball drops and you give up. No, you practice it like 10 times, 20 times, 50 times, 100 times. Um, why is the pronunciation so important? Well, several reasons. Firstly, of course, 
um, you want to sound natural. And that is another underestimated uh, factor in language learning that actually it has a lot to do with self-esteem. So when you're speaking in another language, many people find that scary and the scariness increases if your pronunciation is bad. Uh, on the other hand, if you work on your pronunciation, your self-esteem will uh, grow. And another thing that is um, undervalued with pronunciation is that it actually helps your listening uh, your listening comprehension. Because if you train your tongue and your lips and the whole mouth and throat and everything uh, to produce sounds that do not exist in your mother tongue, then you simultaneously train your ears to distinguish these sounds. So for example, in German, the difference between U and O and U and E and all these things, E and E, um, when you train yourself to pronounce them correctly, you will also train yourself to um, understand them and to distinguish them subconsciously. So that's a little side effect of um, pronunciation training. Um, I will also give another talk on Saturday. I will tell you about that later, about five German sounds that most people get, have issues with and uh, yeah, how to, how to fix them. Um, third strategy for failing. If you have a lot of time on Sunday afternoon and you sit down and learn German for seven hours and then you close your book or your course or whatever and for two weeks you do well this is guaranteed to fail you and this is guaranteed to build a lot of frustration it has something to do with mathematics um, we can only remember a very limited amount of new words per day and we can stuff like 100 or 120 words into our brain, but we will forget them very quickly. So that is uh, something that might be popular for an exam that uh, the teacher tells you to learn 50 sorts of vegetables. And you will remember these, well, maybe not 50, but 47. So you pass the exam. But if I ask you two weeks later, two months later even, you won't remember any of them or maybe two or three. So that's a great strategy to waste a lot of time and not make any progress. So if you want to make progress, it's super important that you repeat a lot and that you work if possible every day. It can be five minutes, can be 10 minutes, but this should be deliberate for language training and nothing else. Uh, strategy number four, when you go to school, usually they will tell you that all grammar is somehow equally important. So whatever you learn in grammar, the goal is to get it right. For most students, this is absolutely overwhelming, me included, and it's just not possible and not feasible and will stop you from speaking because you're, well, in every sentence you have 25 opportunities to make a mistake. Um, from that insight, we had this counter movement since the 1970s that said, oh, let's not teach grammar at all, let's do everything intuitively, which is equally unhelpful because then you never have an idea of really mastering the language. Um, the trick is to distinguish between the grammar that is really, really, really important when you want to speak and want to be understood and want to be understood well. And in German, that's the verbs. It's not the dative, it's not the accusative, it's not the genders. You can misgender as much as you want, it doesn't matter. Uh, if you say der Tisch or die Tisch, I don't care. I will understand what you want to say. Um, there are even dialects in German that have different uh, genders. Uh, so it's like die Butter in standard German, but in my dialect it's der Butter, for example. Uh, so that's not an issue. If I say mit dem Freund or mit den Freund, I might not even hear the difference. Um, I will hear the difference if your pronunciation is, is bad. If you say mit dem Freund, well, this I will hear. But, um, but whether you use an M or an N, um, it's, a, it's a tiny mistake. The verbs are important. The verbs is the thing that you should really, should really learn. Like, ich habe, du hast, uh, please, nothing like du, ha, du habe or something like that, no. Uh, the verbs will lead to misunderstandings or will lead to very weird situations. It sounds very weird if you get them wrong. Um, um, but all the other things, the, the, the genders and the, uh, even the sentence order, if you don't put the verb at the second or at the last place, I will understand what you want to say. I don't say you should not learn these things. When you're at a B1, B2 level and you want to be fluent and you want to write German correctly, and, and then of course you should study this. You should also study it earlier as, as a passive um, sort of information so you understand how the language works. 
but you should not sit there and expect that you can um, apply it correctly unless you have to pass one of these weird exams where they think that uh, you need to know all of this uh, by heart without the slightest problems. Um, so the next three failing strategies are somehow interconnected and they have to do something with uh, speaking um, because the thing is if you want to learn how to speak a language it's, it's like uh, you want to play a musical instrument you cannot go and listen to 500 concerts you will not improve your violin skills at some point you will have to pick up the instrument and play and it will sound horrible and the people are going to run as far as they can but there's a way around it and it's a bit similar with um with 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 um language language learning at some point you have to speak but how do you do it so one strategy um that <laughs> will will lead to failure is well just randomly speak to anybody go to the bus driver and speak something and go to a cafe and, and uh, no structure nothing find native speakers um and try to practice with them there's going to be a lot of frustration because the native speakers will speak to you too fast, too complicated. Uh, if they don't understand you, they might switch to English. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a very pleasant experience if you're a beginner. If you're advanced, of course, that's a different thing. But if you, when you're a beginner, when you're at A1, A2 level, then um, this will probably not get you very far. Um, what you somehow need is like some structured approach at the beginning. You need someone who is willing and able to have a super simple conversation with you. One opportunity might be to practice with someone at a language cafe who is also a beginner or with a teacher, like somebody who is willing and also competent to reduce the language complexity. The opposite approach somehow, study the language for seven years until your grammar is perfect, until you have a huge vocabulary, and then you will speak for the first time. Well, what will happen then is, of course, you will be so scared of making mistakes that you're not going to speak at all. And you're stuck in this loop of the uh, violin concert attendee who uh, knows all the things that could go wrong and doesn't dare to, uh, to do something about it. Um, what if you're scared of speaking? Well, what they usually tell you is a little bit like strategy number five, right? Uh, step out of your comfort zone. Don't just do it. Well, if it was that simple, then we would just tell somebody who has a depression, uh, don't be so sad. Why don't you laugh a little bit more? Yeah, everybody would be a psychologist. It's not that easy. And it's one of the, besides pronunciation, I think this is also the second big neglected thing in traditional language teaching. It's a little bit of a taboo. People are afraid of speaking, or some people are afraid of speaking a foreign language. And uh, it's not rational. I mean, some people are afraid of having a webinar on Zoom. It's like, what is supposed to happen? Nothing. People cannot even throw rotten tomatoes at you because it's, it's just virtual. But our fears are not rational, right? Um, so just doing it is not going to work. If it works, at best, you might do something that scares you so much and then it goes a little bit wrong and then you're even more scared. So what you do if you're afraid, um, and I think I'm not a psychologist, but I think every psychologist on earth will tell you this, you do something that scares you just a little bit. I call it the, the onion principle because your fears are usually a little bit layered. So you might be super scared uh, to talk German in public, but a German teacher, yeah, okay or maybe a friend from Germany or Austria um, that you might feel even more com uh, comfortable. Or another student, somebody who is not a native speaker who makes similar mistakes as you make. Um, this onion is very individual. So it might be that you say, no, the public, I don't care. I, I don't care at all, but a friend, oh no, that's very awkward. So I suggest that you find out what is actually your, your personal onion of fears. And you do something that scares you just a tiny little bit okay and then you move gradually over weeks and maybe months you move a little bit upwards in this and this onion and if you're scared of everything talk to yourself another thing that is super underrated just as you can practice playing the violin at home without anybody listening which will help you improve why don't you do that with with your german uh, many things are predictable when people ask you where do you come from what is your job? What are your hobbies? Tell me something about your family. 
Why do you like traveling? Why are you learning German? All of these things are predictable. You're going to get these questions over and over again in all situations. So you can somehow build a script for them. You can um, pre-learn them and tell them, I always say to, to your teddy bear, uh, your teddy bear will not judge you and will not complain if you make mistakes and will not say anything, will not uh, laugh if your pronunciation is not, is not perfect. Um, some things about materials. Uh, I've been teaching German since I think 2009 and, and, and I've always been mesmerized how boring um, material can be. And of course that is another uh, thing that um, yeah, can be very off-putting. I told you that your motivation has to come from inside. So that's true, but still boring material can kill whatever motivation is there. And um, so I therefore just uh, decided actually to, to make my own materials, which I'm uh, going to show you in, in a minute. Um, or if you want to frustrate yourself, waste a lot of time and not get anywhere, then choose something that is too difficult. I hear German teachers recommend students at A1 level that they should listen to the radio. To the radio. I mean, I don't understand what they're saying on the radio sometimes. So um, that's absolutely ridiculous. You need something that is at your level and a little bit difficult. So it should be a challenge. It shouldn't be too easy because I'm you know, not, learning, not making any progress. But it shouldn't be too difficult either. Um, so you cannot just put any random material. If you are at B1, B2 level, look for something that you're interested in and that you don't find too difficult. If you're at A1, A2 level, I think you will have to go for some structured material that is made deliberately for learning German. Um, because if you go for original texts, original podcasts, original radio, whatever, uh, you will get a lot of frustration and you will not learn a lot from it. Um, well, at number 10, um, Vocabulary learning is, uh, I told you before, is a little bit uh, the limiting factor in, uh, in, in language learning because we need a lot of words to actually be fluent. We need around 4,000, something like that. 2,000 is good. If we, if we have 2,000, we can get very far, but if we really want to be fluent, we need some 4,000, something like that. And the problem is we don't remember very many. So we can manage like three, four, five per day not much more, unfortunately. And we can do that with a lot of repetition. So we need a good process for that. And the, the a perfect process for failing at that is to learn words without context. So you're just saying, hey, today, let me learn 50 sorts of vegetables. Tomorrow, uh, tenses of clothes, just like that on an app on, by heart, um, not embedded into, into anything. Um, so that is basically what led me um, uh, to, yeah, as I, as I told you, to, to make my own materials. Um, I decided to make a German course that is based on a story instead of, uh, uh, instead of boring dialogue. So you can avoid somehow this issue with it's too boring, it's too difficult, and it's completely without uh, context. I published it in 2017. Um, it's, um, I have it here also. Well, I can't show it to you physically in the old days when we had Expolingua in a room, then you could actually look at it, but you can download a free preview at that link here, uh, Scapago EU uh, slash Jens Jakob. Let me see if I can share that in the screen or uh, in the chat. Uh, I think I can't, but uh, well, um, I can do it later maybe. Um, and um, so in this book, I put the whole material into a story that starts super, super simply and then develops it and somehow, yeah, slightly absurd, surrealistic um, novel. It's about two sparrows. One of them drops out of his nest when the Berlin Walls, uh, November 1989. 
And he's picked up by a girl and raised on the balcony at home. And um, he meets another sparrow, Jakob, who uh, teaches him all the sparrow things like how to fly and how to find food and so on. But uh, Jens always stays curious about the, the human family that he was raised uh, by. And he visits them and he wants to know what's happening. And he, uh, one day he, he, he sees that there is an unexpected visitor coming who starts digging out some well-hidden um, secrets from the past that um, uh, yeah that were <laughs> um, shielded from the family behind the Berlin Wall but now suddenly it's coming up. So it's a little bit of a family saga but it is actually a German textbook with uh, carefully selected vocabulary, with grammar explanations, with vocabulary lists of course, translations and, and everything. Um, but then it's a book and uh, you know a book can of course only address some of these uh, failing strategies that I've been talking about. Um, there are the other ones that have to do with uh, pronunciation, with listening comprehension that are a little bit uh, yeah, difficult to deal with. But now we have this wonderful thing called internet. So I decided to make an online course that is based on the same story. Um, and I'm actually launching it today. And in this course, we will, of course, do a lot of things that go much, much deeper than what we can do in the book. So I'm explaining all the pronunciation on video. I have practicing videos where you can basically look yourself up, uh, not have anybody listen to you, not have anybody watch you, and uh, just look at my video and and practice what I'm what I'm teaching you what I'm showing you in the German pronunciation. I also try to find ways uh, how you can learn to speak without having to interact with a teacher or with another native speaker. So there are I think 99 downloadable exercises in the course that um, where you're supposed to react to something that you hear. So you can basically go to the forest and practice German without even needing any Germans around. So if you're tuning in from New Zealand here to this webinar, you can even do it in, um, in New Zealand. And I will also take up all the things, that, as I said in my talk, um, that get put to the side by the traditional schools, like strategies, how can you learn when you're a self-learner? And we're always like somehow learning on our own, if, even if we attend a, a language school. Um, all of this for a very, very reasonable price. The list price is uh, 19.99, like 20 euro per month. Um, but uh, since this is somehow a little bit of a, of a beta test and uh, I might still tweak a little bit. Um, I would also be very curious about your feedback. Uh, I had a few things that I think could be helpful. Um, I have one offer for you now that is, um, if you're enrolled by Saturday, you will get it for a 50% discount, meaning at 10 euro per month. So um, a fraction of the price of a traditional language school, like basically a cup of coffee per week. Um, and the thing is that uh, this 50% discount will stay with you as long as you're enrolled. So um, that's a one-time thing. I, I, I sometimes do like sales where I give like 10 or 20% discount, something like that, never 50%. So this is just on this, um, um, on the launch. If you want to check it out, uh, check out this link bit.ly slash Jens minus Jakob. Um, you can find it there and uh, it should also have the code Expo Lingua in capital letters that you can find here below. Um, so um, I get the discount. Um, yeah, and if you don't like it, 30 days uh, money guaranteed, uh, feel free to shoot me an email. On, um, and, and tell me that the course is horrible and you don't want to, and you don't want to do it. Um, great. I would like to uh, come to your questions, um, but before I do that, um, we have five minutes left, but I have my own Zoom room here at Expolingua. So in five minutes, we have to somehow give up this room, make space for the next group, but if you want to talk to me. Actually, I'm not in web webinar style. You can even put on your camera, you can talk on the microphone uh, about learning German, about uh, the new course, about, uh, I don't know about your life, about anything. We can just have a friendly chat. I can't offer you coffee, unfortunately, but um, um, but at least we can we can talk. 
Um, there is um, um, the link to the Zoom room that you can, can find here, bit.ly slash scapago minus Zoom. Um, you can also find that link on the program at Expolingua. When you click at my lecture that started at 4.15, you will find the link to the Zoom room. And also we have a little competition. And um, if you want to win one of the books um, or a one-on-one -on -one session with me where I help you with your pronunciation and with your German language learning strategy, um, please subscribe to our newsletter. And you can find the link here, scapago.eu slash expolingua. Um, this uh, is actually um, also a great idea if you want to join our free language cafes or um, yeah, if you have any other um, if you're looking for any other information. Uh, great, let me go back here to the, yes, um, my colleague from Expolingua was very nice here and shared the links. Um, okay, I wonder if you have any questions now, we can still have four minutes. <laughs> Feel free to ask me here, otherwise uh, I'll see you in about five minutes in the other, in the other room. Um, let me see, the R of German is difficult. Yes, I have, uh, well, you speak French, that's cool. Then stick to the French R. Um, <laughs> sorry for being blunt. Some teachers say, oh, no, 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 it's not exactly the same thing. Well, R is a regional thing, fortunately. And uh, that means that uh, if you have, uh, um, like, Basically, if you tweak it a little bit, uh, in, in the course I explain how to do that, um, then you can actually go with the French R and it will, will sound very natural. The problem is usually the vocalized R, like in my name, Verna, okay? Uh, there is no R. It's, we call it vocalized R. So this sound is important. Um, I will talk more, more about it on um, Saturday. Um, yes, can explain the usages of verb lesson. Uh, that is a bit too far, maybe in the other room. Uh, how you can on, uh, enroll for the course, uh, maybe my colleague from Expolingua can share the link once again. Uh, what do you think about learning a language through another language? I don't speak very well. Hmm. Not amazing, Anna, but uh, if you cannot find material in your mother tongue, then I guess um, it's, it's uh, uh, way to, it's a way to, to go. Um, a good technique for learning vocab. Um, there are many techniques. There is an important principle. Few words per day, like don't take a hundred new words per day, but repeat them a lot. How you do it, that's really up to you. Experiment with it. Go for one technique, go for flashcards for, for one month. If you don't like it, do something else. Do a vocabulary trainer. If you don't like it, I don't know, write a Russians about every word that you're that you're learning. Um, uh, if you could um, explain the usage, uh, yeah, say something on best strategies to succeed. Well, uh, I avoid the ten strategies that I just um, that I just uh, taught you. Where can we see the recording? I don't know. Um, Expolingua will definitely share it somewhere in their email. Um, for a more advanced uh, learner, Lise Desormeaux, uh, yes, next year. <laughs> We're working on the sequel of, of this book here. Uh, it will be published in the summer, I hope, and there will also be an online course. Uh, courses are explained in, um, in uh, English, so the A1, A2 level, basically for all my courses, not for not only for uh, German, but also for Swedish and Norwegian and the other languages. We're making Chinese now, Danish and Dutch. Um, uh, for the A1, A2 level, they're explained in English. Um, for the higher levels, they're only explained in the target languages. Mm, okay. Um, yeah, great. So uh, you just heard the link uh, for the Zoom room. You can also find it in the program. Um, so I guess for those of you that have more questions, I will see you there in a minute. Um, for those of you who would like to check out the, the course, um, I'm sending this, uh, I'm sending the link one more time. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much for attending. And uh, I will see maybe some of you in the other room in a second.